when you see an executive order that is headlined like this one, proclamation suspending entry of aliens who present a risk to the United States labor market following coronavirus outbreak, etc., there seems to be almost no point in understanding it as some standalone story. Uh, at least the way we see it here on a continuum, it comes as no surprise. And uh, seen from the time of the 2016 elections, for instance, they've taken hundreds of tiny, tiny little actions day to day and tied it all up with duct tape and string, it seems to me. I want you to unpack this latest Trump action for us. Absolutely. And the title is alarming and it is false. It starts off by saying proclamations suspending entry of aliens who present a risk to the U.S. labor market following the corona outbreak. Most of the people who are subject to the latest proclamation are highly skilled foreign nationals who have been sought after by U.S. companies. Majority of them are in the high-tech uh, field and uh, they are on H-1 visas. Some of them are intra-company transferees. And to just kind of uh, blatantly, without any uh, legal basis or economic analysis, view them as threats to the labor market is very disingenuous. This, as you say, follows uh, an ongoing uh, pattern of the Trump administration. This administration has been hostile towards immigrants from day one. This latest um, proclamation encapsulates that hostility. And um, it's basically using the pandemic to block uh, foreign nationals that they've always wanted to block as part of their ideology. Their ideology has been to protect American workers. Whether they're really protected or not, in reality, is a different thing. But optically, they want to, and that's the administration and the people in the administration who want to ensure that Trump keeps up his support among his base. They want to kind of do things on immigration to tell their supporters, we are protecting you. We are protecting you, Americans, by blocking out these foreign nationals who are taking jobs away. Whether that's true or not is a different thing. You've been quoted saying the clause is pernicious and could potentially be used against foreign workers who are in the US. You know, when I read that, it's intuitive almost, given what all we know. Tell us the stuff that is worrying your clients. I know you're in the middle of a busy workday, which is why I'm asking you. You must be getting calls. What are the worries that are top of mind for people who are already here and who are just freaked out, basically? Well, first and foremost, if you're already here as of June 24th, which is starting midnight Eastern time, and you're here in the United States, this proclamation does not really apply to you. It does not really impact uh, processing of uh, H-1B petitions or L-1 petitions. It does not impact uh, extension applications or change of status requests. If you're outside the US and you were not here on June 24th, or you didn't have an, exp an unexpired visa on your passport as of June 24th, those are the people who have to worry. So these are the people outside the US who will come into the US on H or L visas. These people are gonna get blocked. Many people have been filed for H-1 visas under the current H-1B uh, cap. And those cases are being filed and they can be filed up to June 30th. Once these petitions get approved, these folks can come in and start jobs on October 1st if they were outside the US. These people are gonna get impacted. There are some folks who were here on H-1B status, but they left. And then they haven't been able to come back or get visas because of the COVID situation. The, these people are in a very unfortunate place because they too will be impacted by this executive order. But with regards to people already here, for the time being, they don't have to fear. But there is something that I mentioned is pernicious for uh, 
people here because there is a paragraph that says that the Secretary of Labor, along with the Secretary of Homeland Security, may consider promulgating regulations or taking other actions to ensure that the presence in the United States of aliens who are already here, who have been admitted on H-1 visas, or who are pursuing green cards under the employment-based second or third preferences, do not disadvantage U.S. workers. This may just be wishful language. It doesn't have any legal impact right now, but it does kind of direct the administration to take other actions with respect to people who are already here in the future. So this could mean, in addition to promulgating a regulation, it could mean let's say rescinding people's approved petitions because they feel that under the COVID-19 period, it was not warranted. We don't know as yet. And I don't want to speculate. I don't want to, you know, uh, cause needless panic, but this clause does kind of allow the administration to take further actions with respect to people who are already here. At this point of time, no action has been taken so people can rest easy. If action is taken, one can actually try to challenge it, respond to any actions that are taken with regards to individual petitions and challenge it administratively or even in the law courts. Yeah, so basically they've left the door wide open, which they typically do. In most years, you'll always have that clause saying that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's something we've been noticing. Final question, yeah. and I'll let you go. What do you foresee now legally and frame the human condition for us? We always talk as journalist and lawyer and you give me the legal points, but this is more than that. This is a story you've been seeing unfolding from 2016. Tell us what is the human toll it's been taking? It's created a lot of uh, tension and pressure on people who are here because they have to renew their applications and there's always this feeling that it may get denied or uh, and and people are here for a long time because they're waiting for their green cards there are horrendous uh, green card backlogs for people born in India that can stretch into decades so there's already a systematic problem in the immigration law and now you have these executive orders that are aimed against them suggesting that they're a threat to the united states economically or otherwise and that actually does create a sort of uh, uh it discourages the person from pursuing the opportunity in the u.s and ultimately um there are other choices for the person. They can go somewhere else. They can go to another country. Canada is very welcoming. And the United States will be the loser. The U US has been the leader in innovation. And a lot of the innovation has come from people who started on H1 visas. And if you're going to discourage and say you're not welcome because you're a threat to our country, people are not going to come. In, in today's world, especially after COVID-19, people have become very uh, mobile. You can work from anywhere. So people can get employed from overseas and still be able to do jobs for American companies here, but they won't be here to then drive the economy, to buy homes, to go to restaurants, and to generally uh, make this country more culturally rich. Ultimately, the United States will be the loser.